I have rewritten the description of the book. So I'd like to know what you guys think of this new description. Do the Wrong Thing is a book series about a woman who almost destroys herself through lies and delusion. She tells her life story in an attempt to find the truth about who she is, but instead learns that fact, fiction, identity, and reality are slippery and moldable. We're about a third through book four. Working title is Eyes of Different Colors. Last week, Ava couldn't stand living with her parents, so she took the early bus back into the city to look for a temporary home. This is a continuation of a chapter called Home is Where the Rent is Paid. White siding, faded trim, gravel all around the house, where my mom would have flowers. As I go up the concrete steps, the metal railing sways under my hand. I knock, hello, a female voice from the other side. Hi, I'm here about a room. A 40-ish woman in a black t-shirt and jeans opens the door. Long, frizzy brown hair that moves as one unit when she looks me up and down. Follow me, she says. We go up a flight of stairs smelling of old fry oil and socks, pass through a dingy kitchen and stop short at a door in a hallway, which the woman unlocks. This is it, she says, pushing the door wide. Must and a plasticky smell that no doubt comes from the chipped and cracked linoleum assaults me. Dirty beige walls, grimy window speckled on the outside by dried rain and smeared on the inside with fingerprints. A lumpy single bed with a nightstand. A creak behind me, I turn to see a skinny, grizzled man wearing boots covered with plaster come out of a room on the other side of the kitchen. Ignoring us, he snuffles loudly as he sits down at the kitchen table, bends over to tie his shoelaces, then gets up and clomps down the stairs. I walk to the kitchen counter and pull open a sticky, squeaky drawer. Four knives, two forks, an assortment of spatulas and wooden spoons. I open a cabinet over the sink, a pile of chip plates and another of bowls, same condition. It's clean, maybe requirement of living here. Clean the kitchen when I'm showing a room. There'll be three of you. Gustav, you just saw him leave, lives here, and another gent named Alan. I nod. Can I think about it? The woman looks long at me. Her eyelids flicker slightly. Sure, take all the time you need. She deadpans before turning away and heading down the stairs. Outside on the street, I panic. I can't live there. I can't. I head to the nearest payphone with my newspaper, a feeling of dread in my heart. Who'd rent anything decent to someone for six weeks when their budget is as small as mine? 3 p.m looking up hostels in the yellow pages. I have to find a place for the night or take the bus home at 5.30. There's one near the hub, my heart pounds. Hostels are for adventurous young people, not local hicks. Are they gonna ask to see my passport or plane ticket proving that I'm a tourist? I can't afford a hotel. Hi, for one night, please. I try to keep my voice steady. That would be $7. I can't believe it. She didn't ask for ID, nothing. In a room full of metal bunks, a lank-haired blonde folds clothes in the middle. She ignores me. To my left, a brick wall with three alcoves, each holding a built-in bunk, and behind me, another brick wall with another alcove. This hostel is way nicer than the shelter I slept in in Sussex after Elizabeth and I split up on our hitchhiking around the state strip. I take the top bunk in the alcove behind me and leave to find some food. When I return, three more bunks hold backpacks, their owners nowhere in sight. At night, the room's pitch black, except for the two exit signs. I'm wide awake. God, I'm horny. I lie on my back, squirming. Someone is breathing in the loud, rhythmic way people do when they sleep. There are hums and whirs, traffic outside. I slip my hand down my pajama bottoms makes a slight scratching sound against the sheet as I move. When I finish, I hear, oh, fuck. I think it's coming from the other brick alcove. I'm mortified then. Wait, why? Whoever else is masturbating won't say anything or even look at me weird. Our secret. Next chapter, The Almost Perfect Lover. Phone booth, my back against the wall, and my backpack slumped beside me. Another overcast day, but no rain or snow, currently. I'm a few blocks from forever and a day on the street William said he lives on. My insides churn. I wipe away tears. I take the phone off the hook and put the quarter in. Hi, 
Is William there? This is William. Oh, hi, it's Ava. Oh, hey, he says. His voice warms immediately. I'm in your neighborhood. Do you want to have coffee or something? I can't go out. I've got my son today. Do you want to come here? Sure. I find his place a couple blocks up, a boxy townhouse in a cramped row of boxy townhouses. Each one hugging the sidewalk spare two concrete steps to the front door. Wisteria co-ops as a white sign with brown borders to the right of William's door. A path leading into a complex of more squat buildings runs beside the sign and William's. The moment William answers the door, I start crying. I pour out to him about mom, posy, Germany. I don't mention the bulimia. Stay here, he says when I calm down. What? You can stay here until you leave for Germany. What? You can stay here. It's only six weeks. Really? Of course. I have to check with my roommate, but he nods half to himself. She'll be okay with it. I'm almost positive. I'll pay you guys rent, I exclaim. No, you won't, he smiles. For the first time, I take in the living room wall, covered floor to ceiling and front door disappearing back into the hallway that leads to the kitchen and I'll learn back porch with paperbacks. Mostly the old crime novels William likes for their covers. I wanna open a bookstore, he says, when he sees me looking at them. He gets up and pulls a paperback off the shelf. If it was practical, I'd sell only books with cool covers. I notice that the books sit on shallow shelves. I made them custom, William says. He's a carpenter and a renovation guy in his part-time day job. My store will open soon. I'm doing the paperwork now. You think I'd be excited by this? I'm not. Pulp Fiction, Harlan, Alice, reading or not is not real to me. It's not literature. Lydia, William's roommate, is an old hippie like him. She could be his sister. They both have long straight hair and rumpled, well-worn clothes. She in corduroy pants and scratchy looking sweaters. He in the tweed suit jackets. I want to like her and I do. I mean, I don't understand. Why does she smile warmly at me? Why doesn't she expect rent? If I was her, I wouldn't let me crash in my house for six weeks. William and I sit on his saggy plaid couch drinking Molson Blues and listening to Bruce Coburn. Lydia's gone to bed. He touches my shoulder. I smile. He moves closer, puts his arm around me. We kiss. I've wanted to do that for a long time, he says. I smile. We kiss again. Making love. A release for me, even before orgasm. Hell, kissing William, allowing him to kiss me is a release. He's not cool and trendy. He's 10 years older than me. He has no money. Not that that matters to me, but he's not hip. He can't give me any status. He's not attractive. I mean, he is for his age. But there's also the out of style hair, glasses and rumply clothes. I have to let myself go. He's caring for me. He doesn't want rent. He says I can't pay for anything. All my defenses drop. I mean, I have nothing left to lose. We make love enthusiastically. It's wonderful that someone's caring for me when I don't know where else to go. You can't look for a job anyway. You're going to Germany soon, William says. Right. At a small desk in the bedroom he shares with his son during the day when William's at work and the son Tyler is with his mom, I try to follow William's instructions. I write like I'm in Miss Witten's grade 10 English class. I wonder when the stories will start. They're supposed to flow out fully formed like Athena from Zeus's thigh. Wait, that wasn't Athena, that was Dionysus. Athena came from Zeus's head. The stories are supposed to appear in my head, complete, alive and powerful like Athena, not this. How do you write? 